Hi, this is Adam, the creator and lead developer of Railroader. In this video, I'll share an update on our release plans for the game. We'll see some new features we've been working on, as well as give you a better idea of the gameplay by covering different types of freight in the game, and how a new feature can give you more flexibility when you're running AI engineers. Finally, I'll share a feature I've been wanting to share with you for almost a year and a half now. If you're not familiar with Railroader, it's an operations-focused railroad simulator set in Appalachia during the transition era. You'll run a short-line railroad, delivering cars to customers, running passenger trains, and expanding your line to the west. Most importantly, you'll get to decide how you get the job done. Railroader has been in constant development for the past three years, and on and off a few years before that. It's at a really good place, and quite honestly, if we put it up on Steam right now, you could have a lot of fun with it, just like our testing team does every week. And that's because it's very stable and playable. We're really happy with the core gameplay, and we think you will be too. Still, there's a lot to do before it's at a 1.0 state. Scenery and buildings are the biggest area that needs work. I'm proud of the progress we've made, but we still have a lot to do in this specific area. Quite honestly, it's felt like we're in a difficult spot. Our plan has been to release 1.0 this year, but it's just not possible to make the kind of progress we need before the end of the year. We faced a challenging decision. Delay the game into 2024, or consider releasing an early access. We think that early access is the best option for everybody, ourselves, and the community, and so we're planning to release an early access on Steam in December of 2023. We're choosing Early Access because we're confident that the core gameplay of Railroader is ready for a public audience, and it'll enable you to play the game while we continue to work on things like filling the world with buildings, adding polish to various things, and refining things based on your feedback as we work toward the 1.0 version of the game. Now that we've covered our release plans, let's get to what we've been working on. In our last update video, I shared that the full main line is 54 miles long. I have to tell you, I love our map. We've put a lot of work into it, and I think it's a very satisfying run. But it also takes two hours without stops, and that's a long time, even if you have an AI train running it. To address this, we're currently testing an option to let you choose the map size when you start the game. For example, you could choose to run on a 16-mile mainline. We think this will be a great option for players who want a denser operating experience. This is East Whittier, which we're testing as the starting area of a smaller map. There's a coal conveyor here for loading up engines, as well as a water column. The engine shed, and beyond that is a small yard. This is also what we're picturing as your starter equipment. You've got your trusty mogul here, and there's a ten-wheeler that's looking a little worse for wear, a victim of the flood. As part of the tutorial, you'll rescue the ten-wheeler and take it for repairs at the engine shed. I also wanted to show you some of the additions we've made to our rolling stock recently as far as handbrake control, customization, and some of the uh, little cab features that we've created. So on a handbrake, you can now set handbrakes uh, by clicking on the handbrake wheel. And you get a nice little animation there. And the other way to do it is through the inspector here. So you can apply and release and the animation plays there as well. Uh, so let's hop into the cab of the uh, number 11 here, the Decapod, and have a look. We've got uh, sight glasses now, so those show you, this isn't like true to life, they, do, they show you what the uh, percentage water level is in the tender, uh, so not really a true to life thing, but uh, it's more useful than nothing. Um, and then we also have a nice little firebox animation there showing you that yes indeed uh, there is a fire in there. And then one other feature, um, like I mentioned, is the customization. So let's see how that works. I control click on the tender here and switch the equipment tab, customize. So I can set, um, you know, maybe I want to, um, I want to set the text so I can do it like that, easy as that. Um, if I had a string of passenger cars here, I could use copy to coupled to copy that text. Uh, and any like uh, color settings that I wanted onto those other cars. So we're looking at our coach here. We can also customize that. We could put our name on it. We can also set a nice base color on it, perhaps uh, this one. 
And we could also give it a nice gold color for the lettering. Perhaps that would look good. So there you go. There's a taste of customization in Railroader. One of the parts that's come into focus since our last update video are the different freight types in Railroader. And there are four of them. There are Contract, Compulsory, Railroad Fuel Service, and Captive Service. Contract refers to freight cars that you deliver to customers that you've accepted a contract with. Loads and empties arrive at the interchange with the waybill set for your customer. You get paid when you deliver them, and you get paid when you take them back once the customer's done. Compulsory is similar to contract, except there's no contract involved. You're paid for delivering cars to and from team tracks, freight houses, and public delivery tracks. These are just a part of your railroad's presence in these communities. Contract and compulsory cars are not owned by your railroad. For the last two, captive service and railroad fuel service, you'll need to use cars that are owned by your railroad. Fortunately, you already have a few such cars once the game starts, but you can buy more as needed. Railroad fuel service is how you get fuel to run your engines. Coal loaders such as this one and diesel fueling stands need fuel to fill them. So you'll order fuel by setting the empty and loaded waybills on the hoppers and tanks that you use for fuel service. The fourth type is captive service and it works very similarly. You set the empty and loaded destinations. But it has a different purpose which is to supply your contract customers with loads. For example, the sawmill over here, well, it needs logs to function. When you start a contract with a customer, and let's do that right now, we'll open up our company panel here, and we can switch to the locations tab, and we'll find Whittier Sawmill. So once we accept a contract, I'll do that now, the customer tells us how many cars it needs of logs per day. So R1 consumes up to four cars of logs per day. We can find out where R1 is by hovering over here, and that highlights the track. Uh, the other track is SO1 and 2, and those are the output tracks. This industry, as we said, needs four cars of logs per day. Um, and we've got a few skeleton cars. Looks like four of them isn't that handy. So we could set those up by uh, just like the fuel car. I'll control click on one of them. I'll switch to the operations tab. So loads come to Whittier Sawmill R1, and our empties go to one of these three. So you can choose how you want to supply these industries with the materials that they need in the case of these captive service cars. Right now, for the part of the map that we've unlocked, there are three different choices of tracks where we can do this. Um, I happen to know that L2 is a really good choice for this, um, and we can we can have a look at what that where that is. So if I click on the button there, I can it'll take us to it, and we can hover over it and see, okay, well, that's where L2 is. So where is this in respect to our car? Well, if I open up the map, I can see that this is where we're looking right now. Our camera's shown there. And if I zoom out further, this is the Connolly area, and there's Whittier right down there. And this is the, um, the track the R1 track at the sawmill. So those are the basics of how you set up captive service cars. Let's have a look at another feature, which is how we mark cars for repair and sale. If I control click to open up the inspector here and I switch to the equipment tab, I can set the repair destination to the East Whittier repair track. And that's just an easy way for me to tell, okay, well that car, I need to take it over to the repair track which is the, over there in the engine house. We can also say, you know, maybe we decide that we want to sell a piece of equipment. We can open up the sell destination and set that. And once we deliver it to the interchange and the interchange is served, then we will be paid for our equipment and it'll be taken away. So while we're talking about repairs, let's look at how we manage our shop crew employees. This is something new since last time. If we come and find the engine facilities here and click on it, we see that uh, there's a number of shop crew. Right now it's zero, and so that means that no repair work is happening. We can hire and fire, so maybe we think that we want uh, two shop crew working. That costs us $30 a day and runs at an efficiency of 180%. So as we expand the map, we will have multiple uh, 
repair facilities and we can manage those independently. Maybe we don't want to do repairs at, at one of them and we do want to do all of our repairs at the other or maybe we want to spread that out. Uh, so you can manage that this way. If we have a high reputation, then we get a more efficient performance out of our shop crew that are proud to be associated with our fine railroad. Reputation is the main way that the game evaluates your performance, and it does this on three criteria, passenger, freight, and safety. This is a new railroad that Connor and I started testing the other day. Your safety score describes how many derailments you've had in the past five days. Recent derailments are weighted more heavily. Freight performance reflects how happy your freight customers are. Since this is a brand new railroad and the reputation numbers are updated at midnight, we're hoping to see this number much higher tomorrow. The final one is passenger performance, and that reflects how well you're serving the network of passenger stops on your railroad. We're still working on balancing this one, but we think it's more important that you provide basic passenger service across the breadth of your railroad rather than visiting every single stop. These three numbers get rolled up into your overall reputation. A railroad with a high reputation enjoys better prices on equipment purchases, lower expansion costs, more efficient shop crews, and you have the option of serving new customers at a higher starting tier as your reputation has preceded you. So now I've let a little bit of time pass in this save and you can see we now have our daily report. And the idea of the daily report is just to give you an idea of what's happening on your railroad. Uh, so we have kind of a summary of you know, how much did we accomplish? How many passenger fares? Uh, how, you know, how much uh, freight did we deliver? How many waybills are there that are outstanding? That gives us an idea of where we might need to run trains in the, in the next day. Another part that relates to this is the finance tab. So if I switch over there, I can see uh, what my balance is, what my loan status is, um, as well as a ledger showing recent expenditures and income from customers and where that income came from. So you can kind of get an idea of where your money has been going. I'd also like to show you some of the enhancements that we've made to the AI in the game, uh, particularly on the user interface, but we also have fusees which play heavily into that. So let's look at this uh, scenario here. We have our Atlantic and our coach cars, and what we want to happen is we want to set up a passenger stop over here at the Dillsboro Depot. There's a, there, there we are waiting patiently on the platform. Let's get out of the way. So. How can we do this with our current AI tools? Well, you may recall that the AI tools, and I'll switch to the orders tab to show that, we have a couple different modes. Uh, manual means there is no AI. And we can flip it into road mode, choose forward and reverse, and we can set a certain speed that we want. So road is pretty appropriate to, to what we're doing here um, because it's a passenger train running on the road, not, not in a yard and not doing short movements. Um, our switch is lined for the station, that's good. And so our problem here is that, well, let's say that we're off uh, working on some switching and we'd like to set up a passenger stop. You may recall that the tools to do that had been that, well, you'd set the switch against the AI and then it will stop in advance of the switch, but that would cause it to overrun the station. So instead what we can do to set this up is we can put down a few Z. So I'm gonna hit Control F, and that puts down our few Z. And we've got the the train line, and we can monitor its. Um, we see its status down here. So to see, it's spotted the few Z, and its orders are 25 miles an hour. So here it comes. Let's see what happens. So we made the stop, and uh, if we'd had this set up for passengers, they would be loading right now, and then we could, um, you know, we can click on the fusee to extinguish it, and the train will continue on its way, and we would need to set the switch so it could continue. Uh, so that kind of gives you an idea of how you can use fusees to set up things. It does take a little bit of management. You do have to stay on top of what those trains are doing. Um, and maybe that's something that we can find ways to improve in the future. But for now, that's how it works. So let's look at another scenario here. I've set up two trains, and they're both outside of Bryson. This, uh, the logging Mikado is here with the um, empty pulpwood cars headed down the grade. 
and uh, we've got an intermediate signal ahead of it. Uh, the AI right now is set to zero, so it's stopped. And then across from that, we also have a passenger train here that's paused in front of an intermediate signal. Uh, it too is set to stopped. And what we'd like to do is set up a meet here in Bryson. So you've seen that we have uh, ABS style signals and those work really well. So what we can do, we can keep this switch normal for the number one track, which goes right beside the station there. And then on the other end, if I fly down here, um, I can set this, um, this switch, and this is for the pulpwood train coming down the mountain. I can set this switch to reversed. And so now we're set up to have a meet here at Bryson. So I could set a fusee on the track and that will cause the passenger train to stop. I think we're all set. So let's go ahead and um, set those to uh, road speed. Okay, so they're both uh, on the move now. We can check the map. They should be releasing their brakes and heading forward. There we go. We're getting some movement from the, the pulpwood train. And there's the passenger train on its way. So, you know, I think this will work pretty well. But you know what would be really nice here is if I didn't have to fly around and set all those switches. Wouldn't it be nice if we had an automatic way to set those switches? Maybe something kind of like centrally controlled, perhaps. Oh, look at that. There's a DS above that door. I wonder what that, wonder what that means. Oh. oh, look at this. If I flip this from ABS to CTC, now, look at that, we have a panel and we can see there are our trains coming through. So there's the passenger train coming in and there's the pulpwood train coming down the hill and we can set those switches. We see that this one was reversed like we set it. Uh, but now because we're in CTC mode, we do need to give it a route. And so I can set that, oops, don't want to, don't want to normalize that switch. Set that switch to reverse, heading right, which is east. And then this one, set it left. Okay. And now we've set, we've set our route. Let's go fly. And because um, we're new at this, because we just found this panel, let's go check the signals. Um, there's our, um, there's our approach into Bryson and here comes the passenger train. Okay. Those are stopped. That's good. And then we have diverging approach from the semaphore. Uh, once the, uh, pulpwood train gets down the hill, it'll catch that. And so now we can see on our board that the passenger train is in the block. Let's look out the window. There it is. Just came through the interlocking and it's approaching the fusee. And the pulpwood train should be coming around the bend as well. Just a minute. There it is. So it's moving at a target speed of 20 miles an hour on account of the approach, or diverging approach, I should say. And it looks like our AI engineer is stopped at the station. That's great. And one thing about uh, CTC that's important is, um, you know, that route has been knocked down and I can't manually control the switch that so needs to be controlled by the dispatcher at the panel. So now let's jump back to, there's the, there's the train coming. Um, so let's jump back to the panel here and I'll set it to, um, since our freight train is gonna be continuing, it's coming from the number two track. So we need that switch reversed and it's heading to the right, which is east. We can set a signal for it. 
And then for our passenger train, it's coming off the number one track, so we want that normal left for west, and we'll give it a signal. So now we can see there's the green clear signal for the passenger train. Uh, once we remove the fusee, we should have a clear over here. So we've set up a meet. So you can imagine how um, you can use the CTC panel to run quite a bit of stuff on your railroad if you choose to. So this is actually a feature that um, I'm, I'm really, this is the one I was excited to share with y'all about because um, we've actually had this for quite a while and we wanted to keep it a secret to make sure that we could do the job that we wanted to with it. I think that we've been able to do that. Yeah, it's it's quite cool and it's um, it's useful both in single player uh, as well as in multiplayer. It's great for multiplayer when you got a lot of trains on the railroad, and it's you know it's another way to play. You can play as the dispatcher. Uh, in fact, the other day I was amusing myself by um, by playing with the panel, and I essentially set up a number of AI trains on the railroad. There's the bell as the freight train uh, hits the um, east interlocking. I set up a number of freight trains on the railroad and you know had them running against each other and setting up meets at the um, you know at all of our sidings. And so, yeah, there's kind of a lot of sidings, <laughs> so you can run quite a bit of stuff over it. Um, and then this is the um, Alarca Junction, which heads to the Alarca Branch. Uh, which is a short branch covered by uh, this siding over here and so forth. So that's the CTC panel. Um, I hope you like it. Uh, oh, one more thing to show. You know, sometimes it's tricky to to tell who's where. Um, you can hover over it and it will show you what what locomotive is there and how many cars are in that block. So that can give you a hint. Um, but another thing that's nice is that you can use these little markers to help you out. So um, you know, maybe we, uh, maybe we want to mark this one as the, um, uh, you know, that's our, that's our pulpwood heading east. We'll apply that. And so note that it gives it like a green marker that helps us distinguish eastbound from westbound. And we'll create a marker for the passenger train. We'll call that our number 19. And so you could use these markers to help you keep track of what's what, because um, you know if you're if you're juggling several things, it might not be easy to uh, to keep track of of where everything is. So that's a quick overview of the CTC panel. Happy to finally share it with you. Hope you're looking forward to playing with it as much as we're looking forward to you playing with it. And that's our update. Thank you for sticking out to the end. We covered a lot, but I hope you liked what you saw. We're planning two videos to follow this one, a recreation of a 1940 CTC promotional video remade in Railroader, as well as a run through of the tutorial in the game. So you'll want to make sure you're subscribed to the channel to get those. Railroader will be available in early access in December, 2023, that's next month. So head on over to Steam. The link is in the description and add Railroader to your wish list. Thank you again for watching and thank you to our community on the Discord server for their support and patience, as well as to our development team and testers for all they are doing to help make this game real. It is more than a little surreal to think that you might be playing Railroader just next month. All right. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.